Good morning. I'm Jimmy Asbel, one of the pastors at Vineville United Methodist Church in Macon, Georgia. And I want to thank you for tuning in to this broadcast. What you will see this morning is a rebroadcast of last Sunday's service. We're glad that you've tuned in and hope that you find this a meaningful worship experience. Well, good morning and welcome to worship at Vineville. It's good to have you all joining us today. Just want to make sure that you're aware of a few announcements before we begin. The first is that the United Methodist Women are collecting toiletry items for the Methodist Children's Home. There's a list of all the items that are needed both in the Vine and on the church's website. So if you'd like to help out, you can go grab some of those and then bring them here to the church. And there's a collection bin down in the lobby where you can put them. There's also a video online about some much needed updates to the HVAC system here at the church. That will be starting this fall. So make sure that you take a look at it. And if you feel inclined to make a donation to help with those expenses, you can either send a check here to the church or contribute online on the church's website. Our altar flowers today are given by the Nations family in memory of John and Nancy Nation's anniversary. And our rosebud this morning is in celebration of the birth of John Ellis Atkinson, who was born on September 18th. He is the son of Denise and Steve Atkinson and the grandson of Wanda and John Atkinson. As always, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear from you about those. So feel free to send them along and we will be in prayer for you and with you. I pray that our time together this morning may be a time of grounding and deepening our connection with our creator. So let us worship God. I've seen your grace from the mountain I felt you there in the valley below I see your love and your mercy You're guiding me home You're guiding me home I know you're in every season I feel your hand bringing peace and control Jesus, your love is my anchor. You're my only hope. You're my only hope. I will trust in Joy in every sea. 
silent, our hearts on fire. Jesus of victory, the sound of triumph, the song inside us. Jesus of victory, we won't be silent, our hearts on fire. Jesus of victory, the sound of triumph, the song inside. join together as we affirm our faith through the historic Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let's join together in prayer. God of life and new beginnings, we are grateful to join together in worship for we have so much to be thankful for. As we have risen from our beds this week, we have been greeted by the start of fall, cooler weather and rain that has nourished the ground. Lord, we give thanks for the opportunities to share our lives with the people that we trust and love, close friends that we can call in a moment's notice, family members with whom we share our dreams and affection. But most of all, we are thankful for the way your word has come into our midst, for it has changed us. The grace of your Son sets the captives free and calls us unto himself, and in him we find our strength and salvation. Lord, we trust you for our salvation. But things are not like they used to be. Gathering together has its limitations. We miss the warm hug of friends, the smiling faces of our neighbors. Distancing is not ideal and masks are a bother. We long for a time to lift our voice and song together once again. That means by which your people have praised and worshipped you from the very beginning. It's not safe for us or considerate of our neighbor. All of this we miss and, and yet we are still the church. Our Sunday morning worship may look different, scattered, online, quieter, more contemplative. Gathered around our kitchen table or even in our pajamas. But we are here at this time to worship you because you have and are transforming us as kingdom people. And our desire, our purpose is to glorify you. God of peace, continue to be with us in life's constant changes. Remind us when things go awry that not all is lost, for you are with us. Be with us in this very moment as our world deals with a challenging health crisis. Give nations and leaders wisdom and direction as they seek to provide safety and well-being to all who are under their care. God, we pray for our country in a time where there is much division. May we see beyond our political opinions and the cruel ways that we paint the other side and through your eyes see our neighbor, treating them with love and compassion for your son told us that that is the second greatest commandment. Be with those who have lost loved ones. Bring comfort in their time of sorrow. And trust 
and your promise of resurrection. Even when all around us has changed, O God, we know that you are unchanging. And because of that truth, we are confident in your love and grace to hear our prayers. And so now we join together in the words that your Son taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. I invite you to come down uh, in front of the TV or your computer or your iPad or whatever device you're using to, to watch our service. 
uh, you'll need to come down close because I have something in my bag that is not very big. So if you come down, I, I'll show it to you. Reaching in here, it's at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, oh, here it is. Okay. Do you know what this is? That's right, it's a ball. Do you know what kind of ball it is? Don't have any takers on that one, maybe. <laughs> it's a tennis ball. But it's not just any tennis ball. I've had this tennis ball for 40 years. I bet there aren't a whole lot of tennis balls that have been in people's homes for 40 years. But I've named my tennis ball. My tennis ball is named Herman. And Herman not only likes to play tennis, Herman likes to sing. Do you know how round his mouth is? That's a good way to sing. That's the choir director part in me. Herman likes to sing. We all like to sing. And sometimes we sing when we don't even know it. I found myself just a few minutes ago when we were singing the Gloria Patri, knowing I shouldn't sing loudly so I wouldn't spread any, spread any virus, but I just started to sing because that's what I do. That's what you do. That's what we're used to. Or Mike and Lindsay are gonna sing a song for us to help us understand how to sing, and then we'll talk about something else. Sing, sing a song, sing out loud, sing out strong, sing of good things, not bad, sing of happy, not sad. Sing, sing a song, make it simple to last your whole life long. Don't worry that it's not good enough for anyone else to hear. Just sing, sing a song. Sing, sing a song. And this one we all need to hear again, particularly some of us older people. Sing out loud, sing out strong. Don't worry that it's not good enough for anyone else to hear. Just sing, sing a song. Well, we have to watch and be careful about when we sing a song. You know we haven't started our children's choir yet at church. You may have gone back to school and singing was not quite the same as it was last year. We can't sing quite the same way because we don't want to give e get each other sick. However, there is a place and there is a time when we can sing strong and we can sing loud and we don't have to worry about whether it's good enough. And we're gonna talk about that with the grown-ups. And if you're still in front of your TV in a little while, we'll hear about that. If you're not there, you can ask your family after the service is over about the place and the way we can sing even in this time. I look forward to sharing that with you. May we pray. Oh God, what we sing with our lips, may we believe in our hearts. And what we believe in our hearts, may we practice in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, as we pause to take time and look around our world, we see the many ways that your spirit is working for all the small blessings that you give each and every day. 
We pray that throughout the week we may open our eyes and our minds and our hearts to receive your blessings and to be a blessing to others, to give as you have so generously given to us. We give thanks for a life with you, a life of abundance, a life of joy. In your holy name we pray, amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is from Psalm 137, the first six verses. By the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. There on the poplars, we hung our harps, for there our captives asked us for songs. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, may my right hand forget its skill. May my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you, if I do not consider Jerusalem my highest joy. The stage is set, the drama begins. The heartless Babylonians, who are from the area that we now know as southern Iraq, seize Jerusalem and lead them to the point of starvation. They breached the city walls, looted treasures, and scorched buildings. They, they slaughtered the young, the old and the infirmed. And for the survivors, they shackled and marched them into exile. The nations of Israel and Judah were gone. They were no more, and the exiled people wept bitterly. It is at this point that the psalmist comes in, for he too is one of the exiled. And he recounts the story Along Babylon's river, we found ourselves in a foreign land, a land with different customs, different ways of doing things, different songs that they sang. Because it was not just a victory in a battlefield, it was the victory of one way of life over the other. They traveled by donkeys and camels they didn't have any SUVs to fill up on their way to Babylonia, but they brought their harps nonetheless, one of the few things they had room to bring. But there was no room for the use of their harps in this new strange place, so they stacked them on the poplar trees. Their captors mocked them. Sing us one of your happy songs of Zion, recounted the Israelites' God who was supposed to deliver them. But there was no victory to celebrate here. And the people cried out, how can we sing the songs of the Lord in a foreign land? Well, it was time for them to reboot. Time for them to reinstall the drivers and update the software of their thinking. And like the Wizard of Oz, they were not in Kansas, or should I say Jerusalem, anymore. For it was time to grieve once what, what, what once was, and also time to find the new normal. Hmm, 
Does that sound familiar? What is the answer to the question, how can we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? Notice that after the question was asked, there isn't a list of suggestions given. There weren't five easy steps given to solve the problem. Rather, it is the comment on the psalmist that said, if I fail to remember you, Yahweh, may these things happen. May my right hand forget its skill. Or in other translations, may my fingers fall off. May my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. These are the things that the psalmist wants, wants to have happen if they didn't give praise to God. We are to answer what, be, what falls between the two, between the question and between what they hoped would happen if they didn't honor God in the process. But before we try to answer the question, I want to make a full disclosure that I didn't include the last three verses of the psalm because like the evening news often, I would say, what you see may be disturbing. Along the lines of things like, happy is the one who repays you according to what you have done for us. Or, may the punishment of the Babylonians and Edomites fit their crimes. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. In their grief, it wasn't their finest moment. In our grief, it's not only our finest moment. We do and say things that we would not normally do in our pain. But he, he wanted to do the Babylonian men, women, and children harm as they did to the Israelite people. So I've now confessed. We know that part of the story. Now we'll go back to the question at hand. How can we sing our songs in a foreign land? I have three ideas to share, and the first one is related to a personal story that I experienced. Between my senior year in high school and my first year in college, I and my fellow classmates in the choir of my high school traveled to what was then communist Poland. We were represented ambassadors for friendship a group formed by the Ford Foundation. And their goal was to send American choirs to the Iron Curtain countries to create friendships and to help us understand what life was like for those people in their communist world and to have them understand what we were like in the democratic world. There were many undesirable experiences among the many desirable ones the most prominent undesirable one was a meal that was most often fixed for us by our hosts. We stayed in the homes of people who are, had very modest means. Indeed, they were very, very poor. And one of the dishes that they would often feed us was sour milk soup. It is a meal that I would not suggest for a diet program, although it definitely served that purpose. That's one of my memories. Another memory that I have is that I had my 18th birthday while I was there, and at the time, 18 was of legal age. While I couldn't do normal things, whatever those normal things by me, by, uh, that could happen, at 18 in, the, in, in America, but I did have a very special birthday which I'll never forget. The water we would often drink was very distasteful. It had all kinds of minerals and things and it just, just made it unbearable, causing other health problems. But my fellow classmates worked hard, looking hard, finding low the uh, Flat cola. Had been sitting around for a while, but it wasn't water, it was cola. 
And not only did they find the cola in an area where there was very little refrigeration, they found an ice cube in an ice box. They put in my flat cola. It was the best birthday present I had ever gotten, and I still remember it every August. But on the music side of that, I would remember that people walked miles and miles and miles to see Americans, to see people who lived in a democracy, to see teenagers from a different land. I contacted my choir director from then. I hadn't talked with him for decades. But I asked him to help me remember things that maybe an 18-year-old would not have computed. And he recounted a situation which, which triggered my memory. When we sang at St. Mary's Cathedral, he said, thousands of people flocked to the cathedral where he performed as part of the Mass. And the Mass was presented in both Polish and English by a brilliant priest. And after the service, we presented a concert, he said. I remember when Stan Stroman narrated the creation with his deep and inspiring voice. The congregation was enthralled. Most who had never seen a person of African descent were glued to his powerful presence. After the concert, the prolific priest found his way up the very narrow winding steps to the balcony where we were to thank us and tell us how much he appreciated that we were even there, let alone our music. Little did I know until two weeks ago, that priest with whom I shook hands became Pope John Paul II. Who knew? But that brings me to my first point. It wasn't the language or the musical style that made that trip memorable. I mean, we sang classical Western European music like we would sing here in America. And we sang American folk songs that we were used to. All of music that they would not have understood and maybe not really have appreciated to the extent that it could be, but it was the people connection that made the difference in the world. As important as music is, it's necessary, it's meaningful, and it's powerful. It was the people connection that made the answer to that question, how can I sing in a foreign land, connect with the people? Point, new, point two has to do with a theological concept from the Greek called kenosis. An article written by Roger Owens in Christian Century Magazine in just, just past July, he wrote an article about foregoing congregational singing as a spiritual discipline. And he recounted the scripture in the Philippians where Jesus is noted as being in the form of God and yet did not count himself equal with God, but emptied himself to take the form of humankind. Let me say that again. Jesus was in the form of God, did not con his, consider himself equal with God, but emptied himself to take the form of humankind. In other words, moving from a place of entitlement to care for the interest of others. I think it's important for us to keep be reminded over and over again that during this pandemic, it's not about us. It is about the other. Droplets and aerosols are real. They're wide, deep, and ongoing in terms of their virus spreading possibilities. And health officials and scientists remind us of that all the time. But I need to be honest and be truthful. I miss directing my choir. I miss sitting there and watching the whole congregation raise our voices together in song. I miss it. I grieve it. Every single day, 
I want to take my place of entitlement and say, choir will reconvene this Thursday night. But I struggle with that every day and then come to the conclusion, it's not my entitlement that's important. It is the inter for the interest of others that that is important. Kenosis. How can I sing in a foreign land? Consider the welfare of others first. And my final point is related to another question, a question that comes from an American folk hymn, how can I keep from singing? How can I keep from singing? And boys and girls, if you're still here, uh, this, is, this is the point where I was telling you about. How can we keep from singing? We can't. Haven't we all found ourselves singing to them sometimes and we really didn't know that we were? So it's not a question of should we, but it's a question of where. And the place for us to sing, which seems easier to say than what we really do, is to sing at home during this time. Sing by listening to CDs and YouTube and TV and radio. <clears throat> Many of you also often already confess that you sing in the shower. Keep that up. And most effectively, sing together. One place to do so is right in this hour on Sunday mornings as hymn, hymns are being sung and as songs are being sung. Join ahead. And remember in the song we did with the children, don't worry that it's not good enough for anyone else to hear. Just sing, sing a song. Recent studies have affirmed what has been known all along, that whether we admit that we can sing or not, the studies have shown that we will be less lonely even if we live alone, if we sing. We're likely to be more optimistic about the future, about what's coming when we sing. We're more likely to be more mindful of what is going on and what is happening to those we love and maybe those strangers in our midst, to be more mindful of what's going on and also to be more resilient as we wait for that time. How can we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? Connect with people first, for it is a kind of music in and of itself. How can we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? Consider the welfare of others before ourselves. The music will come. How can we sing the, the Lord's song in a foreign land? By singing in our homes by singing in our homes, and we'll expand from there as time goes on. And I share from the 98th Psalm to close, sing a new song to the Lord who restores the ends of the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with a harp, with a harp and the sound of melody. May it be so. Amen. Today we celebrate that a new cohort of Stephen ministers has completed their training and joins our congregation's Stephen ministry. This ministry extends our congregational outreach to minister to those who are most in need of the support of Christ's unwavering love. Stephen ministry strengthens our spiritual vitality and allows us to reach out to our friends, family, and our community. Today, we commission a new group that have completed their training. So today, we recognize the work of Joanne Avant. Lynn Kitts is not with us tonight, but has completed um, the training. Tracy Lohr. Linda Pageant is also um, completed, but unable to be with us, and Lee Reeves.
words that we find in Scripture. Praise be to God, our Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort that we ourselves have received from God. We ask you now to join in serving our Lord and those in our congregation and neighborhood who need to be comforted. As Jesus Christ has responded to your needs, we ask that you, uh, for you to strive to be responsive to the needs of others. As he patiently listens when you turn to him, we ask that you be a patient listener in a hurried world. As he has broken down the barriers that separate you from God, we ask that for you to heal divisions wherever you find them and strive to make people whole. As he has shown you his care to you, we ask that you help this congregation grow as a caring community through your own caring ministry. Are you prepared to meet these requests? Are you prepared to nurture the skills you have learned and to use them in service to others, to support, encourage, build up, and comfort people in all their needs? Are you prepared to serve as Stephen ministers at Vineville? Now we ask you, members of Vineville, to open your hearts to the ministry of these people and to pray for them that they may be effective servants of Christ. Are you prepared to meet this request? And if so, answer yes with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. We also ask that you accept their ministry when you need help to allow these individuals to work with you as you face struggles in your life, that you might receive support and help from your Christian brothers and sisters. If you are prepared to meet this request, answer yes with the help of God. Yes, yes with, with the, the help, help of God. God. May you now receive this blessing. May the Lord Jesus, who has graciously called you his disciple, now strengthen you by his spirit for your ministry in and to his world. May you see Christ in all people and be moved by his life to care for them as you would care for Christ himself. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage and love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. May God bless you richly that you might be a blessing to others. May the Lord Jesus keep you in his grace in all you do from this day forth. May the God of all peace keep you sound in body, mind, and spirit, and strengthen you for the ministry to which you have been called. May the Lord Jesus be present with you in every place as you carry his name and serve him. May Christ, the rock of our salvation, equip you to be a living stone in all your life. And hear this commendation. Because you have promised faithfully to serve the Lord Jesus and his people as Stephen ministers, I commend you to the care and guidance of the Holy Spirit as you in turn care for others. Work hard. Use the skills you have learned, releasing the gifts and talents the Spirit of God has given you so that you might be a blessing to the people you meet and care for. Continue to study. Reflect upon the situations you encounter. Pray for the people whose lives you are privileged to share. Be free to share your own frustrations and needs with others so that you might receive the same kind of care and love that you offer. Act boldly and without fear, for Christ is with you. And may the God of peace sanctify you wholly, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Oh God, we ask you to take these servants into your care. You have blessed them with particular gifts and talents and have provided them with an opportunity to learn more about helping others. May they serve you with the power of the Holy Spirit. May they be quick to serve 
patient in listening, willing to share themselves with others, and give us thankful hearts for them, and show them in times of stress and satisfaction a special measure of your mercy and joy. Keep them strong in the faith you have given them for the sake of Jesus, who cares for all of us in every way forever. Amen. Go now to, in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, hear this blessing as we prepare to close this service. May the peace of God be in your heart. May the grace of God be in your words. May the love of God be in your hands. May the joy of God be in your soul. And may the heart of God be in the song that your life sings. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.